Hi, everybody. Welcome to DT4A webinar series. Uh, I don't know how you heard about that, but thanks for coming. If this is mainly for the, uh, the consortium partners, but I think uh, the, the, I guess the partners also invited other people. So thank you for joining. Uh, and then uh, a, a little bit of this, uh, oops, next slide. Uh, a little bit of this is this is a monthly series uh, we started in december so uh, uh then we're gonna hopefully continue every month uh so we this is organized by war resources institute uh africa office and global office and the main is the idea is to exchange uh, knowledge uh, uh, around what different partners are doing the tt 4 a partners are doing uh in uh African cities and beyond. Uh, so that's part of this. This is supposed to be very informal. Um, so for this, uh, uh, today, for this month, uh, we have uh, three organizations presenting uh, uh, around the topic of building open source transport data collection tools, uh, a sustainable approach. We have Dennis uh, from Trufi. Forgive me if I'm pronouncing all the names wrong. Uh, Philip uh, from uh, uh, IBI at the Retouch from IBI and then to go. Uh, and then uh, we usually start with some announcements. I think this time is WRI announcements. So this is, uh, uh, we have like an annual, this is 20th anniversaries of transforming transportations. Um, this is uh, like organized by WRI uh, and the World Bank. So this year is going to be uh, in March in person. Uh, uh, in March 14 and 15. So that's, uh, uh, please save the dates if you're in DC at World Bank. Uh, the event is free, so you can join us. And then the We Will DT4A uh, organization will have a sections there. So that's uh, important uh, to, if you wanna, yeah, you hope, hope to see you all there. And then along that for this and uh, DT4A partner meeting, we are taking along around March 16th, that's gonna be Thursday. I think it's likely to be at the World Bank too. Uh, we will have a room at World Bank about that. And there is also a section by organized by VREF around informals and share mobility, uh, probably around uh, about, uh, on the same day, uh, different time. Uh, and uh, TDCI event is also happening in March. Uh, we don't know the date yet, uh, but this is, we will remind you again later. So this is our small announcement. Uh, with that, we'll give that to to Dale, uh from Mobility Data. Thank you. Thank you, Hain, for the introduction. And hello, everyone. Uh, on behalf of Trufi, uh, Arcalis IBI Group and Mobility Data, we thank you for joining this part of the webinar uh, today. What we wanted to talk about first was how to actually build transit data for African cities and other cities, leveraging uh, the open source community and uh, the work that has been done around GTFS as the open data specification for public transit that uh, with our dt 4 project that we are supporting has been uh, promoting quite a bit. So without further ado, I will first uh, give it to uh, Dennis from Trufi uh, for them to showcase what they have been building. And then we will have the demonstration by uh, Ritesh and uh, Philip from uh, Arcadis IBI. And then I will close by presenting some of the tools mobility data has been doing. Dennis, the floor is yours. Thank you for the introduction and having us. I'm going to sh start sharing my screen. Let's start the presentation mode. Should be able to see the presentation now. Um, yeah, welcome everybody. Uh, thanks for joining again. Um, I'm Dennis. I'm from Trufi. I'm a business development manager at Trufi. I've been in several projects as a project uh, lead, and yeah, I will be presenting a little bit about Trufi today and how we yeah leverage open source software and uh, communities to do our work around GTFS data, transport data, etc. I brought a little agenda, uh, yeah, which is about Trufi. I'm going to be sharing a, some, a few things about Trufi. Um, we will be talking just real quick about informal transport in like one or two slides. And then the main part will be um, the digitizing informal transport part where I will be yeah, showcasing or explaining how we work. Um, and then I brought some use cases as well and some closing remarks. So about Trufi, we are an NGO. Uh, some of you might have heard already about us. 
Um, we're a nonprofit startup for informal public transport, and our first app was launched in 2018. But the NGO was founded in uh, 2019. The headquarters are in Germany, but we're, let's say, scattered all over the world. Uh, we're a very international team. And our mission is to improve public transport uh, worldwide through digitization because the founders uh, back then um, had a, all of, almost all of them had background in yeah, mobility and and IT and digitization topics. So we saw a lot of opportunity there. And the vision is to really um, help people in developing countries have more, have an easier access to mobility services in the city, public transport options. Um, yeah, because they get more attractive through digitization, et cetera, and accessibility. And our flagship product that I will be um, yeah, explaining real quick later is our multi-model journey planner, which is open source and cross-platform. You can see a, like a small indication of where we are usually active. We're mostly active in Latin America and Africa. Um, we have a lot of yeah, cities that we have conversations with. We have a lot of contacts and a very broad network into a lot of um, authorities in Latin America, especially with our colleague Leo as well. And we started gaining traction as well in Germany last year with two of our, let's say, biggest projects. Um, which is Herrenberg and in Hamburg, where we used what we developed for um, yeah for Bolivia, where it all started, and it found traction in Germany, and they saw the necessity for using open source and also using what we developed here. And now the application and the the, the trophy core, as we call it, um, is being used in Germany in several cities as well. About informal transport, as a lot of people. Yeah, I mean, informal transport has a lot of different, I mean, um, let's say, definitions. We, for ourselves, found the definition of like it not having official stops, no schedules, documentation of bus lines, etc. As I mean, it's pretty similar the definitions, but I just wanted to make this clear because this is how everything started uh, for us and how our work started. On the right, you can see the trophies as well, which is where our name comes from. This is a uh, the yeah informal transport bus in Bolivia in Cochabamba. And yeah, the informal transport is usually typic typical for uh, yeah, developing countries, Latin America, Africa, and Asia. Um, and there's a lot of operators in different uh, unofficial transport networks that are run by private agencies. And that's where we saw a lot of potential for um, to tackle the challenges that there are. And some of the challenges, especially uh, regarding to standards is that there's the digitization standard, like the GTFS that we all know is not really designed for informal transport. And that's what we saw as a big challenge and where we wanted to start helping. Um, it's run by a lot of different operators, as I mentioned already. The authorities are usually or very rarely involved uh, and have no information at all about uh, the the operators or the operations in their cities. And vehicles usually stop anywhere, drop up and pick up passengers uh, at whatever intersection. And it is also a lot of times subject uh, subject to route changes without without like central coordination. So the route can be changing, but nobody really gets that information. And therefore, user, it's a missed opportunity of like sharing that oper um, information with the users. If we look into how we um, uh, work around this topic and especially <clears throat> I think I want to emphasize as well that we see the community as a big tool as well so when we started in Cochabamba the community was the very first thing that we um, yeah build up in Cochabamba to to showcase the necessity of improving the public transport system the informal transport system which is why for us the community building is like the foundation of all the work that we do in the end um, and usually we then do trainings with the community. We help the community understanding uh, the topic. And then we start by using OpenStreetMap. So everything we do is open source and open data in the end. All the data that our apps generate can be um, are in the hands of the, let's say, users or authorities if they uh, want to work with us on the apps, et cetera. But we go through OpenStreetMap and, and then we have the OpenStreetMap data that we then uh, transform into GTFS data with some of our scripts, which you will see on the next slide. And on top of that, then we have an, our application, the 
the um, flagship product that I mentioned earlier, the multi-model journey planner, and that user and that data then in the end can be used to improve planning as well. Because if um, I will be explaining that as well in the next slide. So how we digitize it is pretty much that we teach a team to track the routes. Um, I will be talking about that in the use case later as well. Um, we have, we digitize the timetables um, from books if necessary, and we collect the existing routes and put them all in OSM. And this is like where um, apart from, from our community tool, as we call it, um, where we started to implement tools for things that are repetitive and we, that we wanted to automate. So this is one of the first tools that we created back then was so-called Truvi OSM to GTFS script, which is a script that really um, focuses on providing or transforming all of the available data into GTFS format and also um, and also pre-filling or, or generating dummy data where it's needed for GTFS to exist. And like, for example, with a stop, it if you if there's it generates some stops so that the city at later stages, for example, could look into that data that the script generated around those stops and they could think about implementing new stops in the city as well for buses, etc. Yeah, we create the GTFS standard. It's then released on a public domain. So we have uh, data released um, on the DT4A repository already as well, for example. And then that data can be used by whichever um, application or yeah company or authority to be yeah to do whatever is necessary in the city ourselves we use an open trip planner as well for our application so that's how we use the data in the end to provide the application why i mentioned the um the root planner as a tool to collect data as well is because we so through the throughout the years we've been building the community in Cochabamba, uh, where this application started. It's an open source multi-model journey planner. We built it on a very uh, very easy technology stack with OpenStreetMap and MapTiler. It's it's a full door-to-door -door navigation, like uh, most of us know it. I would say um, it's a customizable wide-level solution, and it's released on under open source licenses. But the important part that I'm um, why I'm mentioning this is because we, as I tried to say earlier, we we didn't necessarily start with the tools, but with the community and the intention of helping the or helping solve the challenges around the area of uh, informal public transport. And with uh, like with more and more time passing, we just looked into our process of working with the communities and working towards the goal of having an application and try to. Um, implement tools and and scripts and whatever is necessary trainings to really um, automate and facilitate the process as easy as possible. And this is where we also had the idea, for example, to have a route tracking uh, feature within the application that the users use anyway for looking up routes. And that way the users can easily contribute data and new data to the, yeah, to OSM and GTFS. So the users can um, yeah, open up the application. They can jump on the bus if they say, "Hey, this bus route changed." They jump on the bus. They yeah, go into the route tracking feature. They start the tracking, and once they get off the bus, they stop the tracking, save the route, and then can directly upload it from the application to our service, where we then prepare the data to provide it to OSM and GTFS et cetera, and transform it to GTFS, etc. This is um, kind of a tool summary that I uh, made. Uh, so as yeah, as I mentioned and you noticed for us communities is like the baseline of a tool uh, that we use for all of our work. <clears throat> and on top of that, the ones that I already mentioned are the Truth USM to GTFS scripts and the root tracking features where are that are so that the GTFS script is like very crucial for us to transform from OSM to GTFS and the root tracking features is especially um, um, important in Cochabamba because we have a very big community there, which we'll see later. We also, um, in that process, we also created some presets for JOSM because we use, um, um, yeah, we built some presets for JOSM that help us with the provisioning um, of 
data to OSM because there's a lot of room for error in that process as well. And it's a very repetitive process. So you have a lot of parameters, a lot of values that you need to put into JOSM when providing data. So we uh, focus on optimizing those parts so that there's as little errors as possible and to make it easier to train people to do that themselves as well. And re very recently as well, one of our developers <clears throat> who's been working on um, our backend on the OTP server um, developed, or it's in development, let's say, a GTFS editor plugin for IDEs for um, integrated development environments so that you can change GTFS data within the development environment on the Open Trip Planner. That's currently being developed, but that will help us really to yeah, to just make things easier, the developers not having to change around uh, environments and systems, etc. And another thing, uh, which is kind of like a logical output or outcome that we had throughout working with communities and automating things are the trainings and uh, mapping workshops that we frequently do for people to understand how they can contribute, how it works, um, et cetera. And that's also how we are currently, or why we are currently creating together with Mobility Hub Colombia, I think, um, an online course, which is in the making that will be available online as well. I brought two use cases with me. Um, the one is Mockshot, which showcases uh, that we <clears throat> got contracted by the city of Mockshot um, to do a mapping of their semi-formal transport routes. So they approached us and wanted to have a first uh, glimpse of what their public transport infrastructure looks like. And they uh, approached us because they knew that we we have done that with local communities, mainly in other cities. And yeah, that we have the capabilities of training local people. We have local people um, and contacts in the city as well. So yeah, we did the trainings. We had a big group of, I think, like five to 10 people or something like that, that we trained. We showed them how to generate OSM data, how to use our scripts, how to take photos for mapillary. And they really went also, and they really also went on the bus where it was needed and just rode the bus and and wrote down all of the stops and the information around the buses. And that process show, and this use case shows that collecting data doesn't always mean that the data is already available somewhere digitized. It's really, it really comes down to pen and paper in a lot of the cases. And that's why we value the, the community approach a lot because it offers new, new insights into the whole public transport system that usually the users of it know the best in the case of informal transport, especially. And there's just some facts that, yeah, kilometers travel, people from like 400 kilometers within the city to do all the trekking and yeah, all of those things. The second uh, use case I brought because it's our, let's say most successful one as well um, by downloads, especially is the Trufi app in Cochabamba, which is where everything started, as I mentioned or, uh, earlier. We have a project there, or we have a community there that is led by a community manager that we provide. So we have a community manager that talks to the community, offers trainings, responds to questions, shows them new features. We have a uh, feature launch parties to say so, uh, which were very popular in the past and gained a lot of traction. Um, and we had a lot of users in the first two weeks as well and are currently on more than 50,000 downloads, which is, which is quite a lot for our um, for our work in the end. And yeah, the community is very active and we have a lot of contributors there, which is quite good because it showcases that we, uh, how we did this work, for example. So we, we, with the help of the community, we started very little, there were very little routes. This was, this is a more recent comparison, but there were less routes before we started, even even less than the 297. But we are currently, as you can see, at 437 routes because they have an, a crazy amount of uh, operators in Cochabamba. But with the help of the community, we are able to really, as you can see, if you look at the picture here, on the right, uh, you can see that the whole, let's say, western part of the city area got added to the got added to the to the map, which is great because it just has a lot more outreach. People are way more flexible and are able to use that, and that's also partially driven by the yeah, especially driven by the community manager, community slash community manager, 
and the feature that we implemented to do the root tracking because the users have an easier time contributing and understanding, oh, hey, it's so easy to contribute data, let's do it, etc. Coming to some closing remarks, um, we just wanted to give you on the way that uh, we hear that, or I hear that in my role as business development manager, when I, I mean, I mainly talk with a lot of different organizations, companies to try to see how we can do things together the one thing that really surfaces all the time is that collecting and maintaining open source data and data in general in this uh, in the mobility sector requires a collective effort. So there's no way that one big player will be able to do all of the work. So we think that joint efforts are really key to all of this. So pretty much all all stakeholders and yeah, companies, players, organizations have a place in this uh, area. Knowledge sharing as a, is also a key component of the whole process. As we mentioned, we learned from the knowledge that we gained throughout the years, and now we are sharing it back to enable the communities to, to help us um, do improvements in this area. And open source and open data tools bring technology, technological sovereignty to, yeah, to cities where there's probably little resources. They don't want to be dependent on large multi uh, national companies and all of those things. So the really the mid-sized cities is where we are currently also really looking into how can we help mid-sized cities and smaller cities to to not lose um, not lose the race towards a better like mobility infrastructure in their city. And as a closing statement, I would say that community or in our in our sense, the community is bigger or like is this as equally as important if not bigger than tools in the end, for our approach at least. Thank you. If you want to reach out, feel free. Um, looking forward to the discussion later. Thank you, Dennis, and thank you for the use case. They're very interesting. And as a compliment to what you've just said, saying that there is a place for everyone, but we more certainly need to think about smaller cities and smaller agencies. I'm very pleased to introduce uh, Philip and Ritesh, who will introduce to you actually the tool that they created for smaller transit agencies to help the generation of GTFS data if you don't have the chance to have a very vibrant community as for the Trophy community. Ritesh, Philip, the floor is yours. Great. Thank you, Jutha. Um, and thank you, everyone, for giving us this opportunity. So, um, uh, Phil, next slide, please. Uh, quick introduction. So, I'm Ritesh Varade. I'm a director at IBI Group, at Arcadis IBI Group. Sorry, we just got acquired. So, uh, the, the name change is going to take a little bit of time to, to sink in. Uh, and with me is Phil. Um, uh, Phil Klein, who's a transit data analyst at, at uh, Arcadis IBI, and he will be running the demo in a few minutes. So uh, next slide, um, we are a design and technology company. We are a slightly different scale than Trophy. We are 36,000 people uh, across the world. Most of our, our work has traditionally been in the quote unquote global north, um, not, um, North America, Europe, Australia, et cetera. But we are starting to build tools and services that uh, can be used in other parts of the world. We bring core expertise and experience in everything to do with transit, transit planning, transit technology, transit data. Um, next slide, please. Um, I manage what we call our transit data practice. Um, we help agencies all over develop their data strategy, uh, improve their systems and the quality of their information, provide high quality information to passengers, and then help them analyze service and measure performance. Next slide, please. We also have a focus on open data. So GTFS, GBFS, OpenStreetMap, open source, uh, open trip planner is a major part of what we do. And then transit data tools, which is the system that we're going to talk about. And finally, open architecture and everything we do so that people can plug and play and use the components that they want to. Next slide, please. We maintain, uh, we have built and maintained uh, a set of software systems. Um, I'm going to focus on the first one, Transit Data Tools. Um, it is the tool that we have. Uh, it's open source. It is the tool to create, edit, validate, manage, and deploy GTFS. So uh, next slide, please. What is Transit Data Tools? Um, we think of it as a Swiss Army knife for everything GTFS. 
we tend to work with GTFS like multiple, multiple times a day, all parts of our team. So anytime we need to create, edit, validate, manage, deploy GTFS, we use transit data tools. This started as an open source project uh, funded by the World Bank. Uh, it was created originally to create a web-based, map-based, intuitive tool that could be used in two cases, Mexico City and Manila, to create their first set of GTFS data sets. Um, that tool has evolved a lot. Um, it, the, it, it originally started around 2013, 2014, but we've been building on it for the last eight, nine years, and, and we'll show you where it is right now. Uh, the entire code base is on GitHub. Uh, it, it's the data tool server and a data to, tools UI. There are links to the GitHub repositories later down in the presentation if you want access to it. We also maintain and support a hosted multi-tenant system that we use and we make available to our clients. Next slide, please. So I'm going to turn it over to Phil. He's going to walk through the features and walk you through what the system looks like. Yeah, so I'm going to basically outline exactly what it is data tools can do, and then I'll actually be able to show you guys actually a, a mini demo just uh, outlining these features. So first and foremost, um, like Rajesh said, it's sort of our Swiss army knife for everything GTFS. So, um, you know, first feature is creating and editing GTFS. So that means creating routes in a really intuitive manner um, in a map-based editor, which I'll show you in a second, and uh, uh, give it, providing the ability to adapt to changes in service and to troubleshoot existing issues, such as common issues with shapes.txt files, which I'm sure everyone who's uh, interacted with the GTFS has seen before. Um, beyond just creating data, we also are standard GTFS data. We also support um, creating data in the latest GTFS Flex V2 specification, and that's for service like dial a ride and other flexible service. So we support the whole um, features of that specification, like creating polygons for service areas and that sort of thing. Um, beyond just creating the data, we also have um, features around managing and validating GTFS. So you can manage uh, many different feed sources within a project, and you can view and fix validation issues uh, directly within the feed manager. Um, and then as well, we allow uh, features for deploying GTFS. So that basically means grouping feeds and feed versions, um, and then deploying them to an open trip planner instance, which is what that looks like on the right. So basically taking that data that's in our system and then putting in it into a trip planner that can be uh, used by users to see um, the data and the service and the schedules and all that. So I'm gonna flip over just quickly to uh, data tools, show you what it looks like. Um, can Ritesh, can you just confirm you yes. can see? Yes, I okay, can perfect. see this one. Um, so I'm going to walk us through those features. So we're basically going to uh, create some data. So this is basically what data tools looks like. Like we said, it's a map-based editor. Um, and I'm going to basically just quickly create some GTFS data. So what we can do is we're in the start. Where are you right now? Uh, I'm in Nairobi right now, okay. actually. Yeah, in Nairobi. <laughs> Great question. Um, so we're in the stops menu right now. So I can just basically right click on the map to create some stops. We're just gonna create some dummy service. I'm just gonna keep right clicking um, and basically just set up uh, a few stops, which data tools automatically just creates the required data um, that we need. I can flip over to routes quickly. I can just create a new route. It's automatically gonna give me all the info I need. I'm not gonna change any of it just cause it's good enough for our purposes. I'll flip over to trip patterns. And we can basically just really easily add those new stops that we just created by clicking on the map. And Data Tools is automatically going to generate the path that it thinks the bus is going to travel on based on the shortest travel time between there. If we don't like that path, we can always edit that by just clicking here and moving uh, that route around. So that can fix a lot of shapes issues that people will see with GTFS. Um, to go in and create trips, we can just go into our timetable editor. We can add a new trip and we can move that to exam, for example, to 7 a.m. to just create a 7 a.m. stop. And you can modify any of the travel times, arrival times and departure times there and the trip ID and everything associated with that right there. Um, so that's creating some, some basic GTFS service. If we flip over to another tab I've got here, I can show off basically what I was talking about in that second feature, which is just how we can manage different uh, feed versions within a project. So if I flip back over to DT4A here, this is one that we've set up with a host of different um, feed sources and feed versions. So you can see um, the different areas and the different GTFS feeds here. You can see this management platform can tell you, you know, if they've expired, 
if they've been deployed to an OTP instance, they could tell you if the version that's already been deployed in OTP is expired, if you need to update it and redeploy, um, tells you the dates that it's valid for. And then if we flip into an individual feed, we can actually look at the validator and sort of diagnose issues and take them straight into the editor to actually go in and fix them. We could fix them, we could publish a new version, we could redeploy to OTP and get those updates right into the trip planner. Um, and then that last feature we were talking about, which uh, was uh, basically just deployments. So for example, this is one that we've set up for ATL. So we can basically just take a look at our deployment here. We've got a series of feeds for a region. Um, we're managing the different versions. Um, and as we make changes, we just update them. And then we make a deployment to our OTP server, which basically just ends up looking like this. So um, basically users can plan trips uh, using that service that is coming straight out of those GTFS feeds. And it's a multimodal trip planner. Um, it's OTP, so you can incorporate other GBF, GBFS feeds um, and real time and uh, all that. So I'll flip back to the slides and we can continue with a few other things. I'll pass that back Great. to Ritesh. So I saw Sarah's uh, question. Hi, Sarah. It's been a long time. Um, how do you get access to the tool? Um, so uh, I'll, I'll give a little history. Um, we have, since the very beginning of the project, we have made the, the entire code base available. You will see the two links on, on for GitHub um, uh, here, and you can set up the system. What we found is it isn't very easy to set up the system and more importantly, to maintain and support a, a system. So we, as I said, have our own multi-tenant hosted system. Um, we used to get a lot of inquiries from small agencies and agencies around the world on how to access the system. Um, to be fair, we used to say, you know, hey, this is what it's going to take, this is what it's going to cost, and that's usually where the conversation ended. What we realized is that GTFS is important. GTFS, without GTFS, none of us uh, get to do any other work. But more importantly, GTFS is the basis for transport data around the world. So starting last summer, so 2022, we made our system free uh, to access for small agencies. Uh, by small agencies, uh, so sorry, small agencies anywhere. So uh, by small, we had to make a definition. So our definition was if you're a operator with less than 40 buses or 40 vehicles, let us know, we'll set you up with free access to the system. As of today, we are making our system available to all agencies in the global south. All you need to do is talk to us, send us an email. We will set you up on the system. Uh, we will do a training session. We will uh, give you access to the documentation. And from then on, you know, you can start creating data. And frankly, it is as easy as Phil made it out to be. Uh, we've trained people in half an hour to create many, many uh, data sets. Um, now, there are some limitations to that, uh, the primary, and we'll get into that, uh, but we also offer paid access to the system for if you are not in one of those categories, either a small agency or an agency in the global south, um, then again, just get in contact with us and we can give you access to the system. So that's how you get access to the system. Next slide, please. I'm going to talk about one case study. And this is well, this was really interesting. So um, some of you on the call introduced us to the folks in Jakarta. Uh, they wanted to create a GTFS data set for Trans Jakarta for the for the tr transport service in Jakarta, and we ended up giving them access, training them on the system. They created a GTFS in about a week uh, for a huge, huge network. It's now going through the, sorry, but interminable Google um, Maps um, validation process. Uh, it's taken a few, uh, it's taken a few months longer than what we expect, but um, it will, uh, it will be live soon. Um, that's one case study. Uh, it's, it's where a big agency in the, in uh, the global South was able to create a huge data set using our platform. Um, so, Again, I said there are some conditions. So what are the conditions? Um, this is a free tool, which means that any data you create needs to be free and available. Um, that, that is non-negotiable. Any data you create is not cannot be paid. It has to be free. It has to be available on your website to download and use by anyone. Um, you just provide this acknowledgement that you used our tools. Um, we can provide you uh, uh, provide you training, we can provide you documentation, but frankly, we don't have the capacity to provide training. We can partner with agencies like, 
like WRI or ITDP in order to, to, to provide support, but, but really we are not set up for that. If you do need extra support, let us know. That's a paid service. Um, we can't guarantee you a, a service level. Um, we got a call uh, the, the other day from someone saying, hey, I'm using your free tool. Something isn't, isn't working. Can you fix this in an hour? No, we cannot. Um, it, 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 there are some limitations that uh, uh, that come with what we provide. And finally, you know, we can't take any liability for for your use of the tool. So, pretty simple conditions. Uh, but uh, what I want you to what I want to leave you with is you can get access to the tool today. All you need to do is just contact us, and we will set you up on it. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, in order to contact me, uh, my my email is all on the right hand side and uh, yeah, just fire away. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Ritesh. And actually to build uh, very quickly before we uh, uh, go to Q&A, because I see that there are questions uh, in, in the chat, I want to present very quickly uh, what Richard said about the data quality and uh, at Mobility Data, we have some open source tools that are dedicated to actually quality. And I know that uh, at Arcadis IBI, I'll get the name right, <laughs> and Trufi, you're also using part of the tools, uh, the open source tools that we have developed around data quality and namely our GTFS schedule validator. So uh, same as any open source tool, uh, it's free to use. Uh, this one has the specificity of being uh, open source. So same as uh, the tool created by Arcadis IBI uh, group, it's available on GitHub. People can copy and paste uh, the code to integrate it in their pipeline or any other tool they build. Uh, the main important uh, specificity of this one is it's canonical. And what it means, it, it follows to the T the specification. As of today, we are working on improving it to also include some of the best practices. Uh, for example, Ritesh was mentioning in Jakarta, the uh, quality process, uh, if you're discussing with some of the bigger trip planning app like MoveIt or Google or Transit app or uh, Maps from Apple can be very long and tedious. And they have some uh, either custom validation or some best uh, practices uh, set in stone for them to ingest the feed. We are looking into including that in our validator. So it's easier for everyone who want to have very quickly their GTFS feed into those platform uh, gone through the validator. What we have uh, managed to do this year, thanks to the amazing contribution by the entire community, uh, is we created a desktop app. So it's easier to use than just code uh, from GitHub if you're not very, uh, if you don't have resources in software development or if as me, you're not that tech savvy. And we're also working on having it online. It should be released this year. So uh, that's, I, I will share with you the tool. And as uh, Richard said, this one being uh, open source and free, the only thing is we often ask for people to contribute back. Like if you see anything missing, let us know. But it can only go as as based on our uh, existing resources. So don't expect a, it to be fixed in an hour, but it will uh, always be taken into account for the next uh, iteration of it. Uh, another tool that uh, Taylor kindly mentioned a lot in the chat is our mobility database. So it's a giant repository that lists all the GTFS uh, scheduled data set that we are know of and are publicly available. And that is important for us because if we're all working with open source tools uh, for an open data ecosystem, we will promote feeds that are publicly available. The only caveat with that is uh, it's maintained by your community, so it's not exhaustive. And every time we find new data sets or some of our partners tell us that they work with new cities, we try and include them as quickly as possible. As of today, it has been included in a pipeline of 10 trip planning apps, so they actually keep on checking the database to add new cities, new feeds, and so on. Uh, we have uh, we have it on GitHub. It can also be downloaded as a CSV file, and it can also be found online. What can be used is, for example, uh, if you are uh, 
tweaking, working uh, with the tool presented by uh, Ritesh and Phil. You can download some of those data sets from the database since the data is publicly available and start playing with it to uh, accommodate yourself to the usage of their tool to generate a GTFS feed and then start creating your own feed. So that's it for the uh, tool that we do. I think we have quite some messages, so I think we'll take those fast uh, before we move on to other questions. Um, so I think we had a first question for you, uh, Ritesh, on your definition of the Global South. Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I, I wouldn't get into too many semantics on this. Uh, let's just say, I come from India and we've been called the third world or the developing countries. I think global south is a better term. Um, it is what you make it out to be. Um, I put what Wikipedia considers the global south definition. Frankly, uh, I, I, the, the broader point is we don't want to act, limit access to anyone. Um, it, this is a matter of is it free? And frankly, if you happen to be in North America and you are New York, then sorry, it's not free. Uh, but if you happen to be in Trinidad and Tobago, probably. Um, I, I don't see why not. So, uh, uh, Catherine, just get in touch and we can set you up on the system. And it's a perfect segue to the question I had for everyone and all of us is the, the definition of free, the definition of open access. Uh, yeah. It all comes with a cost. It all comes with uh, investment from our side. It can be time. It can be uh, money. Uh, trophy team spend a lot of time doing the training, uh, making it available to communities, but you also need to manage these communities. Uh, and I don't know about you, but on the mobility data side, we are like, we, we don't expect payment, that's for sure, but we need some kind of contribution. So one of the ways to uh, contribute to our open source tools, the database or the validator is to promote it, but also to let us know what is wrong. Because if we never get any feedback from people using the tool, and at some point people discard a tool that is, they say, oh, it's open source, it doesn't work, it's broken. If we did not know, we cannot use it. We, we cannot improve it for you. I don't know on your side. Yeah, um, uh, Tuto, if I can add to, to that, that is perfect. Um, we, uh, in terms of contribution, if you find something, let us know. Uh, better yet, you know, if you are a little more technologically savvy, open a ticket on GitHub. It really helps. Open an issue on GitHub. It really helps us. Um, another contribution could be, you know, uh, feel free to do a, 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 a pull request. Um, for example, uh, we are working with some developers in Poland. They did a translation of of, of data tools into Polish. Uh, it's something that we would never be able to get to. If you can contribute. Great. Um, and if you need to build capacity around it, like, you know, uh, what we used to call train the trainer, we will train you if you can train other people that really helps, you know, um, uh, us to manage kind of uh, the, the amount of resources that we are putting on. Uh, I just want to say quickly, people can join in, like turn on your camera if the quality, uh, the internet is good enough uh, so that you can We'll see who's participating, and yeah, this is supposed to be sort of informal. Uh, so uh, please uh, turn on your camera and then uh, uh, join the conversation. Uh, Denise, do, did you did you want to add to the contribution part? What if people cannot like fund your non-profit organization? How can they help? Um, I mean, we so we are a non-profit organization, and we have. We have some part-timers, as I mentioned earlier to you. So we have people that are focusing on specific topics during their day-to-day uh, -day work. Um, and what we do, and we've been gaining, and a few of them are here as well, we've seen that people are interested in supporting and it's an easy access to helping and doing voluntary work if you have somebody that is, acts as some kind of mentor. So if you have an idea for a project or a, a good network, if you've been connected to a few cities, for example, or something like that, you can easily approach us and then we can see how we can do things together and and look for the the area where your knowledge fits best. We have people that wanted to support with business development. We have people that are developers that wanted to support. So we are, as an NGO, really reliant on that, a part of the part-timers that we already have in place. Um, and once it gets to the project, it like and once we find a project, it really 
the focus is really on like mainly local people like having or reaching out to local people and and establishing a local network in that specific city for example and that's then more the effort on our side of approaching or trying to find a way to approach the local community thank you dennis um I know it was mentioned a little bit uh, on uh, by, by Ritesh in, in your presentation was the license of the data. Uh, that is, I think, something that we all believe in, that if you use open source tools, make sure that the data is open publicly. It can be on, on your website, it can be on the DT4 database, uh, then we replicate on the mobility database. But uh, I think that would be a breach of agreement if you make paid data set using our tools. So that is something that we would like to emphasize. However, if you create data and you work on the quality for specific purpose that cannot be disclosed, it's okay. That I think that can be okay if it has sensitive data, if it has like improvement that are very specific to operational data and so on. But the public information of, uh, let's say the core GTFS, for people to navigate should should be free. Uh, I don't know if there are discussions uh, among the participants yeah. here or in the room about that perspective, because I know it's a question we get asked a lot. I mean, from from our perspective, if you use the tool for free, it has to be free. That's just the the the, the baseline for us. It's yeah, it's pretty much the same for us. I mean, we we always say so when i go into conversations uh, i always say not the first thing but pretty much very early i say you could if a city approaches us or any authority we say you can go on to github and build the application yourselves and you can just use our help to i don't know do gtfs trainings like um like philip and and ritesh are doing but um in the end all everything that we do and provide is available and accessible online so yeah that's like what's always in our focus in the end. So, yeah. And now a question that I think would be a little bit more open built on the GTFS data set that you all help support uh, from both organization. And because it's one of uh, DT4A main tagline, how can we go beyond mapping? What's the next step once you create a GTFS data set? Because it can't just be that, the end goal. It's a very good question because as I mentioned during my presentation, especially we we see a lot of times as we focus on like the smaller cities as well. Uh, I mean, we have big cities in our portfolio as well, but we see that's, yeah, the very big, issue or topic that it's not being talked about enough is that updating and maintaining the data around uh, informal transport especially that is supposed to everybody talks about informal transport as being in the end a lot of cities live off of it but a lot of cities also can use it to feed into like uh, like central brt systems or whatever the metro and it gets forgotten that the data needs to be updated and nobody like goes beyond that that's also a challenge for us and how we try to approach that is by really having community community managers in the cities where we see there is a very active or very big community that are that is interested in keeping up uh, the city and improving things but it's still a challenge for us as well and a question that will probably that might be solved or like at least supported by tools that are being developed for people to easier yeah do all the things necessary beyond the mapping yeah i think that dennis answered it really well thank you uh a question for ritesh or phil how do you get agencies interested in transport data how do you get agencies interested in transport data i i i, I mean i'll say uh, no agency says we don't want gtfs um that's 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 the conversation we used to have five years ago i don't think we have that conversation anymore um it, it, i i think the the bigger question is i know gtfs is important okay what is it and how do i get it or if they know that part it's like yeah but it costs so much or it's so difficult to create uh that's where we come in 
Um, so I, I, I think the conversation has moved beyond interest to making sure that there are there is a easy way to to create and uh, and manage it. Um, I think the other part is is again quality and maintenance. Um, we can only do the tooling, um, as as Dennis said, like having other ha building a community or building capacity around maintaining the data sets is important. And frankly, it's not something that we can do, but we can partner with organizations such as WRI, such as uh, ITDP, and others in order to do that. Thank you, Ritesh. We have a question from Taylor. Hi, Taylor. Hi. Well, first, thank you all so much for, for being here and talking. This is this is incredible, and it's great to have so many experts and really smart people in the same site, uh, virtual room. Um, so I'd like to, if I, you know, maybe so we'll try to answer to this question a little bit and also ask another question to Ritesh. So Tutho asked about what are the next steps once an organization has GTFS or once a city has GTFS. And part of that is that I think it'll be able to feed into a lot of things that organizations like WRI and like we and many others are already doing, right? Um, I know you're working on this mobility hub, we're working on this atlas of city transport, and those will enable us to measure like UN SDG 11.2, right? Which can, if a city has GTFS, then we know where the transit is, then we know who has access to transit, and we can help maybe try to get funding or try to do better planning so that cities can make sure that more people have access to transit, transport. Um, the other, but Ritesh, I wanted to actually push you a little bit harder on, on Ted's question about how to get agencies interested in transport data, because maybe you're not having that conversation now in the US, but I think you would still have to have it in Brazil or India. Um, and so what were your answers five years ago and how can we give those the same answers today? I, I, I mean, I, and, and I'll be very flippant about this. Your data isn't on Google Maps. No, your, your users don't know how to use, how, how to, uh, what services you run and how to get from A to B. I, I mean, it, 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 sometimes it is that simple and say, okay, uh, you know, the, 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 the end point to, hey, it needs to be on Google Maps. I know it's a public company. I know it's a big multinational. Keep that separate. Most people think about, I need to get from A to B. They can plan trips in any other way. But if they can't do it on Google Maps for their service, that's a question that that agency gets from a lot of its users. So the next question is, okay, what does that mean? Hey, do I need to contact Google? No, you don't need to go contact Google. What you need to create is GTFS. And then the, the capacity building, the, the education starts. Um, we uh, There are tons of, I mean, maybe hundreds of conversations we've had where, again, the, the, the first question is, I need to get my data on Google Maps. Now, it is important for us to answer the second question, which is, or, or to make the second thing, which is, just because it's on Google Maps doesn't mean it's, the, it's done. Um, Google Maps is a endpoint, but there are lots of other endpoints. Uh, there are open endpoints, there are, uh, there, there are, uh, there, there are um, uh, open source tools as well. And these are these systems and these data sets are useful for your own planning, performance measurement, um, education purposes. Uh, and so those data sets, again, need to be open and available beyond Google. Thank you, Ritesh. I think that was a, a perfect uh, answer. And it actually it resumes a lot of the things that DT4 project has been pushing for, saying that it's not just creating it uh, on one app or one, uh, yeah, putting it on the map is not enough. So with that, unless there are uh, any other pressing questions, I think I'll, it's time to give it back to Hain and the team of WAI for the closing before we run out of time. Uh, we have a few more minutes. If, if anybody have questions, I guess there was one question for Dennis uh, from Leonardo from ITGB. Uh, why did you use the open trip planner too? Uh, I think, why did you choose? Uh, uh, I mean, we started using open trip planner back in, I think 2017. And when we started doing the community works, everything started in Gochabamba and we had contacts there that have been working in OTP uh, with OTP because it was what uh, helped them reach the goal that they had back then. So it was, there's no specific, we just started with it back then and it's stuck with us since then. So it's not really, not really a, 
let's say narrow change running system i'm pretty sure there's other uh, approaches as well but we just have like experts and people that knew how to use otp back then so we started building on top of that our root planner and we as well are a huge proponent of otp it's a lot of what we do yeah so a lot uh, of, it's a lot of it's used a lot in the open source area for root planning and all of the trend, public transit um yeah work that has been done has been done um eva or stefan were like showing your turning on camera thank you <laughs> so do you have any other last questions before we wrap it up uh, yeah. okay uh thank so, you. An interesting... uh, thank, you. <laughs> thank you for joining uh with that i think we're closing uh so like for the next month, it's going to be on February 15th. Uh, hope to see all of you, if not most of you, if not all of you. So uh, <laughs> uh, it's going to be by Warbeck, and it's going to be about uh, Kinshasa DRC, uh, transit planning in Kinshasa DRC. So we are going in a specific country at this time for February. Uh, Thank you very much for joining. And then this uh, this video is recorded, so we it's going to be available in a few days when we upload it to uh, both DT40 websites and WRI website. Uh, thanks. Uh, see you next time. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.